And then we went into Mr. Pancake. And that featured Miki Yamanaka on piano. Bill Stewart was on drums. Steve Nelson on vibes. Orlando Le Fleming on bass. And uh, it's from the recording called Mickey. And we have Mickey on the line here on WPFW. Welcome to uh, WPFW, Mickey. Hi, how are you? We're doing fine. Great, yeah, that's great. Great getting into your music today. It's, it's really, yeah. really nice. So, Thanks so, for playing. Oh, I have to. It's, it's really, really <laughs> great, great stuff. So you're, uh, well, let's let's start from the beginning. How did you get into playing jazz? What, what, what prompted you to approach the piano and, and then start uh, improvising on it in this music that we call jazz? Yeah, um, so I was born in Japan, raised in Japan. Um, my parents made me to go to classical piano lessons uh-huh. when I was young, you know, like typical. Sure. okay. Typical, everybody does, you know. Um, I didn't really like it in the beginning, but... Uh, um, I guess I kept going, and I happened to move to the city that kind of specifies jazz, which is called Kobe. Uh-huh. Um, okay, sure. Uh, there are a lot of high school bands and junior high school bands that play jazz, like jazz big band charts. And it's pretty rare in Japan. Like, they, we do a bunch of brass band and all those stuff. But jazz is rare, and but I just happened to move there, so my parents were like, "Oh, we love jazz, so like, what you know, why doesn't Nikki go to one of those schools and she can do some jazz?" So I started listening to Count Basie, Buddy Rich, and all those like big band stuff. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that was the beginning, very uh-huh. beginning. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. And, and 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 how did you uh, how did you get to the United States? That, that, what what. Um, so, like, long story short, I was not doing music as, uh, like, a academic sense of, you know. I went to totally normal university in Japan, but I was still playing jazz, like, side. You know, I was just enjoying uh-huh. listening to um, Kenny Garrett or, like, Joshua Redman, like, all those, like, super stars, like, back then. like sure, 90, okay, yes. Um, yes. 2000, you know. Um, and I got into... Jazz more, I started playing a little more in the local venues in Japan, and I just, just flew to New York for just a vacation. I just wanted to see some shows. And then I, I saw Cyril Walton at Dizzy's Club Coca-Cola um, in New York, and I, that just blew my mind, like, big time. And I quit. I quit my master's in science oh, wow. in okay. Japan. Okay. I called my mom, hey, i got to talk to you deeply when I get home, but it, it was great i gotta talk to you like i want to change my life basically so i talked to my parents they didn't like the idea of me moving to the states but uh, in the end i kind of you know convinced them i really want to do this for just a year please let me do this i wanted to speak english as well couldn't speak english when i moved six years ago so uh they were like okay that's cool you know they were like supportive in the end but yeah that's how i moved to the uh-huh. states well, Cedar Walton did it. I, I, I can understand totally why. Totally did it. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that was so great. I went Boy. there three nights in a row. <laughs> did, did you get a chance to talk with him while, while you were at the club? No, no. Oh, I okay. couldn't speak. Any, I couldn't say anything. I was just so blown. I okay. was like, oh, my God. This is so, like, the student tickets were so cheap, like okay. $15 to no, see sure. Cedar Walton. Yeah. Wow, that was great. That was so great. Yeah. yeah no, I got to got to to, to know Cedar, Cedar Wall. I was really blessed to oh, to, to, to know him and, and have him have him on the show and have him to my house. So yes, oh, now it's really oh, really really fortunate. Amazing. So well, yes, I know how how that that could really grab you. So so now that you're you're in the United States, how do you get your career kick started? What, what do you do? Um. So first of all, I went to English school during the day, like to keep my visa and also to study English. And then at night, I just go to clubs and, like, check out shows and get to know people, just get to listen to the actual live jazz that's happening in New York. And then after all those shows, I just started going to jam sessions almost every night, basically, um, to, like, small, fat cat, Cleo, Patrick's Needle, like all those jam sessions, like late night jam sessions. Mm-hmm, so I just mm-hmm. went out every night, like started learning tunes. I didn't know really any tunes. So like I took notes, 
learn tunes, and I go to jam sessions, and I'm trying to call those tunes. I just learn to get to know people and get to do sessions together. And then, you know, like, beginning it was very slow. I didn't have many gigs. I didn't couldn't work really easily. So uh, I didn't do much. I was just basically going out, practicing during the day, go to school, um, check out the shows, and make more friends. That's what I was doing, yeah. Did you do any 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 music school while you were in New York City or, or just hanging out uh, to play? Yes, and do I, eventually, I eventually went to Queens College and got master's there because I quit my master's in Japan. So uh-huh. kind of had to finish my actual... <laughs> was was uh, was Jimmy Heath still there when you were when you were going there, or had he retired? No, by then? no. Uh, I I graduated there three years ago. Uh huh. Um, okay, so you missed him by a while then. He, he yes. He, he spent a lot of years there. Uh, he he really. Yes, uh, I I I know that. I got to actually meet him and like hang out with him a couple quite a couple times because my teacher Jeff Hatton plays with sure, him a lot. Sure, of course. Yes. So, like yes. I I every time they play in the city, I just go out check out. And they go to the green room and like get to talk to him and stuff. Yeah, he's a great, great, great guy. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Mm-hmm. No. Uh, so uh, now, now you're getting your career started. You actually, uh, uh, this recording that you did was recorded last year, and it's just, it's just out uh, very recently. Mickey. Ah, uh, yes, yes. So how did how did you hook up with Steve Nelson and, and Bill Stewart? Uh, yeah, those yeah those players are just like my heroes, right? Uh-huh, basically, okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, so so they're like, um, okay, how do I start? So Steve, that's easy because uh, I was thinking about making record last year, and then I was gonna do trio because my mom especially was like, hey, you should do a trio record, like uh-huh. to feature yourself. <laughs> okay, and I was like, mm, mom, you're right, <laughs> yeah. but I like to comp behind players like uh, i really okay. because i you know i went to all those jam sessions and stuff and the jam sessions like in new york especially like one tune lasts like 30 minutes uh, so like right. all the horn players take solos and stuff. so i got to really i had to like comping you know to be able to survive that situation sure so i yeah. i really i think my strength is comping so i really wanted to showcase that as well and then I was thinking about who to have, and then I actually got to play with Steve before um, at Mezzo Jazz Club in New York, and then he just blew my mind, like Sitter did, you know, it's kind of same level of holy crap, like what the <laughs> hell was this? <laughs> okay, wow. So, like, I basically talked to him, hey, I'm thinking about doing recording, would you be down to do half of the recording, you know? Then I can showcase myself as a accompanist and also as like a pianist, you know. Sure. Okay. Yeah, that's Steve Nelson's, you know, uh, uh-huh. story. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And Bill Bill Stewart was like one of my favorite drummers. Period. Like I love his playing so much, and then I got to see him many times, but I was too afraid to talk to him. But I know Peter Bernstein and Larry Golding pretty well, who they work together all the time, those trio. Um, so I talked to them, hey, I want to play with Bill. Like, do you think I can do this? And they're like, dude, why don't you try? You know? <laughs> okay. I'll introduce you to him. And I was like, okay. And, and I actually got to meet him. And like he listened to my playing. And he was like, okay, let's do this. So. Yeah, I'm really fortunate to. Uh, I, 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 see, I see you got Larry Goldens to write the liner notes for you. Uh, yes, for yes. <laughs> Larry okay. has been helping me a lot. Good, big good. Time. Okay, uh, he's my mentor and a great friend for me. Okay, so so tell us about Orlando La Fleming. Uh, okay, so Orlando, um, I just when it, whenever I was hanging out in the city, like he was just. You know, he just happened to be playing with Ari Honig or oh, sure. Peter Felder, okay. mm-hmm. like all those shows that I was hap- I was there, and like I got to know him very personally well. And I just because I'm doing this recording with these like high profile musicians, and then I want to have someone all oh, great, but also I want to be able to connect with 
people, and I wanted to have someone that I can really trust in a personal level. Mm-hmm. And Orlando is very experienced bass player, plays with T- Justine Watts and all those great cats, super experienced, and also such a great guy, and I can really trust him. I want to try this way. I want to try this way. And he was, okay, let's do this, let's do this. And he was very, like, down to the earth to try to support me, in a way. Mm-hmm. So, okay. yeah, he's a great player. I mean, if you listen to it, it like, you can just tell how amazing he is. And, yeah. Sure, sure. So so this weekend, however, is going to be a real challenge then because you like comping so much and you're going to come <laughs> to, to uh, Bernard Thompson's solo piano series, which he's been doing yeah. for... For for about uh, th- three three four years now at the Arts Club of Washington. Yeah. H- how are you going to approach a solo concert, a solo recital? Um. So yeah, like that. When Burnett reached out to me, I was like, "Oh, this is going to be so challenging." And um, um, I kind of made myself to make kind of own arrangement for those tunes from my record, just kind of for this concert, basically. Um, and I like comping. I like, I was just playing with the singer tonight in the city, and I just love comping, but I think I can approach music with how I want to do. Like, maybe you can listen to the best solo piano players around the world, but it, there has to be a way that I can only do. Sure. Sure. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, that's how I'm trying to see if I, like, just go freak out, like, I have to learn all those crazy arrangements and all those stuff, like, I'm going to, you know, I'm not going to do well. So I'm just going to do me. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. No, it's it's quite a series, and, and, and the locale is really nice. Uh, <laughs> really great piano. And I understand you're, you're making a, a, a side trip to Baltimore on, on Sunday. I just saw the, yeah. the listing for Andy Music uh, up up in Baltimore. So uh, Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so folks up in Baltimore, you, if you, if you're listening here at PFW, you have a chance to, to hear Mickey Yamanaka at Andy Music Sunday. What time's it set yeah. at Sunday? Uh, 2 p.m. It's a during the day. Okay, one afternoon. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. If Excellent. you want to get Excellent. some brunch and right. stuff, yeah. Right, right. But, uh, Monday night, it's a, a, a seven o'clock, uh, concert at the Arts Club at, uh, on, on I Street. And, Again, Burnett Thompson's just been, been fabulous with the artists he's been bringing in. And uh, uh, yeah. I'm so pleased that he's got you coming in uh, this Monday. And uh, I'm very excited. <laughs> so so uh, uh, the pianojazz.com, I guess, is the information uh, uh, link to, 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 uh, to get tickets. And, uh, again, uh, Burnett Thompson uh, uh, has been doing wonders with, with what he's done with this series. Mickey, yeah. I, I'm looking forward to, to seeing you on Monday. And uh, so you have some unusual titles. We heard Mr. Pancake <laughs> and, uh, and, and another another food title, Stuffed Cabbage. Uh, tell us about yeah. your your compositions. <laughs> um, I tend to write music when I'm cooking. Aha, uh-huh, okay, okay. I just come up with like some stupid ideas or some simple oh, ideas. Okay. Like, I just like tend to write it down like when I'm cooking, like, these like stuffed cabbage and like and when I'm like flipping the pancakes I was like oh this can be like the idea of like this motif and stuff so I just kind of think about you know I remember that I thought about this idea when I was cooking so okay. I just put that title naturally oh I and see. I love okay. cooking so good, good. awesome <laughs> awesome so uh, well we'll hear stuffed I'll, cabbage I'll talk more about it like, yeah the conference. yeah for good. sure okay well, well I'm sure we'll be hearing some of these compositions uh, on on Monday at the Arts Club yes. Uh, Mickey Yamanaka, thank you for calling in tonight, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing you as we we listen to uh, yes, thank you stuffed, so much stuffed cabbage. Uh, see you on Monday. <laughs> see you on Monday. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm.